I'll be uh, taking on the helm as head coach for Prattville Swim League uh, beginning this year. I've asked my good friend, David Haygood, to videotape this. And we're going to put it on YouTube because I want all the parents to be able to watch this. It's not necessarily for the kids. It might be kind of boring for the kids. It might be kind of boring for you. I don't know. But uh, I, when I decided to do this, and I, let me back up. But when, when, the, when this job opened up, and my hat's off to Matt and Marcy for building this team over the past 10 years and the work that they put in. I was a little trepidatious. That's a big word, kids, but it means I wasn't real sure whether I could do this or not. And as you can see, I'm not in my coaching clothes because it was registration at Troy all day today. So I do have a job that pays a lot more than a <laughs> swimming coach, okay? And so I have to be true to my, to my, what I do, and I have to put food on the table. So it's going to be a difficult thing for me to do that, to, to, to do this and to balance my job at Troy. But fortunately, we have a wonderful staff. And when I talked to David Lewis about this, and I talked to Jennifer about it, they felt confident that this would work out. So that's what we're going to try to do. Uh, and that's why I, I'm very excited about doing this. Um, but I, I, the things I want to say today, I think are so important that you understand the groundwork and what I'm trying to do that I, I wanted to have this meeting. And I want every parent to watch it. And I know some of them are going to probably, we're going to put it on YouTube, we'll probably watch it for two minutes. And, then start doing something else while it's playing. Say, yeah, yeah, I watched it. Well, you know, when they, when they find out, well, what do you mean I can't get on the deck? I said, well, you should have been at the meeting, and I told you, you're not allowed on the deck, you know? So, so you guys, you're going to know everything, and you're going to look at the other guys and call them rookies, because you should have been at the meeting. When I started, when I, just like anything in life that you do, when, when you take on a big undertaking, you kind of want to think about exactly what it is you want to do. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's that, that biblical verse where there's no vision, the people perish. So I've got to have a vision for this team. And my vision, and, I, and I've come up with this mantra of building character and building champions. And I think I'm in fairly good um, company when I, when I came up with this because as I started to research some of the, what other USA swimming coaches do, John Leonard, executive chairman of the American Swimming Coaches Association, and I have several readings for those of you here. Let me, let me start these past around. John Leonard said, I can do two things. I can build kids and I can build swimmers. And that's kind of like the, the mantra that I've just grabbed one passing around. That I came up with this idea of building character and building champions. It may be a little trite, but, but that's, that's my vision. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to unfold this to you tonight, all right? I'm going to stand right in front of Carrie so she can't see a thing. Right? Is that all right? So here's how I'm going to do this. Uh, really, I'm only going to do four things. I'm going to do some brief introductions. Talk about my team philosophy, which I think is the most important thing I can convey to you. Talk about the day-to-day -day grind, the nuts and bolts of the team. And finally, if you pay very close attention, when you walk out of here, you're going to know the secret to what makes a good, good swimmer. It's a secret, OK? So you're going to know that secret today. So as you can see, a backstroke start demonstrate. Where's Lexi? Where's Lexi? See that backstroke start? OK. Which out of the, out of the water, OK? So <laughs> let's get started, OK, Lexi? I'm going to start off with introductions. Jennifer Barrett's not here. She's on a, uh, a trip in the Prague with our leaders group. But we have our administrative guru, Carrie. Please stand, Carrie. Let people see your face. Um, <laughs> Carrie's actually, first of all, Carrie, you do a great job. Thank you. I mean, she is, she is awesome. It makes my job and Marty's job so much easier. But if you have questions about drafts, uh, sign, anything, you talk to Carrie. She's at the front desk. Probably you, all of you have already done that. Uh, I am Joe Reynolds. I'm the head coach. Uh, I'm not going to lay out all my credentials because it, I don't want to do that. But I will tell you, I've been doing this since 1996. It's been a long time that I've been coaching swimming. Um, I've been to, I have been at or coached at <laughs> a jillion meets. The only two I've never coached at or been at is NC2As and the Olympics. Okay, so I was at Olympic trials last year. So I've seen these. I've been there and I've been around these, these swimmers and I've coached with some of these. I've been around some of these coaches. So. I want you to know that I, 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 I know some things that, that I think can help these kids. My assistant, and who actually is going to do most of the work, is Marty. I think we all know Marty. So we, if you want to stand up and say hi. <laughs> okay. This is Marty. <laughs> Princess Ray. Marty is probably the greatest age group co coach and motivator in the entire, in, in the whole world. So I really am trusting to, uh, Marty and in, 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 
He said, you sure wish your husband was here to hear, hear, hear that. Um, and she actually has the office at the Y because between these two, they're taking care of the day-to-day -day mundane issues, okay? I've got the vision, I impart wisdom, and then I walk away, and they make it happen, okay? <laughs> now, we have some great assistants. Doug Watkins, a master swimmer, been coaching for many years. He's going to assist me with the gold. I am going to be the gold head coach. Russ Rissman has been swimming master, has been working with us for many years. Russ is right there in the purple shirt. He's going to be helping with silver. Marty is the silver coach. Um, Andy Zorn over there, right there, that lady right there, she's going to be helping bronze and with the, the high school swimmers, who, who the high school swimmers will practice with the gold group. She, uh, Marty is the gold, is also the bronze group coach, but Andy's her able-bodied assistant. By the way, Andy has more coaching experience than anybody in this room, I'll bet. I'll bet you did. Right, Andy, would you agree to that? She's been coaching since, what, 1971? Uh, her cousin is James Barber, assistant coach at the University of Alabama. It's a long legacy of swimming in her family. Okay? Uh, we do have Cryland, which is what we're going to call it this year, and that's with Jason Langley. Jason's out here. He's fixing a flat tire. And I also want to say, I couldn't put her name up there because she does so much, I would have to put it in big letters. It's Thea. Thea, where are you? Thea Langley right here. Everything to make the team run in terms of fun, swimming suits. You know, you come to me and say, Where's the swimming seat order? I said, oh, oh, talk to Thea, okay? And Thea is going to be amassing a able cadre of people to help her with those kinds of parents association issues, okay? So those are the introductions, all right? So let me begin with what I think is the most important thing I can tell you. Is an educational, I mean, education, I teach at Troy, so I want to talk about my educational philosophy. No, I'm not going to do that. I want to talk about a team philosophy. And I think that the philosophy of a team or how things are done spring from the spirit of the person in charge, okay? And my philosophy is fairly simple. I am, a, I am a Christian first. I am a father and a husband second. I am a servant to you and the kids third. And I come last. Okay? That's my philosophy. So with that in mind, and, and the values that I have, and by the way, I know that's my philosophy, but we all fall short. Okay? So sometimes I don't do things really well sometimes. But that's the way I want, to, I, I want that to be. And I want to be a servant to the kids and to you all. Um, because you're entrusting your kids to me. So I think it works well with a YMCA coaching because there's some certain things you can do at a YMCA that you can't do at the city. Just look at what happened about five or six weeks ago at the city when we tried to do some things that it just didn't work out well. Um, uh, clubs teams, there's just certain things you can't do with club teams that you can do with a YMCA. YMCA swimming is great too because they have a special swimming meet and sell swimming meets that nobody can attend except for YMCA swimmers. And the most fun meet I've ever attended, I've been to nationals, junior nationals, YMCA nationals, Olympic trials, the most fun meet I've ever been to is the YMCA nationals championships. Most fun meet, especially when it's in Fort Lauderdale on the beach. Okay? <laughs> So that's why it's ideal to be a, a coach at, of the YMCA. So with that in mind, who I am and what the Y allows me to do, I said, well, let's, uh, let's do two things. Let's try to build kids. Let's try to build a championship attitude. Character first, okay? Character first. I'm actually going to create lessons for kids to sit down. We're going to talk, have talk character issues. We're going to partly because I don't have any pool time and partly because I think it's very important to, to help to develop these kids. So I'm going to more on that in a minute. And finally, building champions, instilling a championship attitude. Now, to a 10-year-old or a 12-year-old, here comes the Turleys. <laughs> <laughs> to a 10-year-old, she walks in, everybody point at her clock like this. <laughs> here she comes. Give me a second. Give her a big, big round of applause, Miss Turley here. Yeah, congratulations. Uh, well, when I'm talking champions, if you're, if you're 10-year-old uh, uh, Brooke Turley, a champion to her is somebody who gets that gold medal or is, gets that high point trophy. But that's not the kind of championship attitude I'm trying to instill. Certainly, it's wonderful to be a champion in, 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 in its own rights. But I want, you to, I want you to meet a champion here. Look at this guy. Lost his legs in an earthquake. Okay? Look at how he starts. How do you do that without hard work and perseverance? Overcoming your adver your, the, 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 the adversities that, that, that life deals you and becoming the best you can be. You're not going to stand next to Michael Phelps or Ryan Lochte on the blocks, okay? You're not going to get to that. But certainly we can try to instill a championship attitude, okay? And I'm going to tell you another story. There I was at Wall Park in Birmingham. It was about eight years ago. It's a closed-in facility, 50 meters. 50-yard backstroke, open event, okay? Up comes this guy in a wheelchair, about 40 years old. Hops off a wheelchair. 
His arms are severed from here and his legs are severed from here. So all he's got is these little tiny legs and little tiny arms. Sits on the edge of the pool. Take your mark, go. He slips into the water and those little arms just start do, 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 do. I mean, how did he do it, you know? And for, you know, key to swimming is to grab a lot of water. He didn't have anything to grab water with. So he was taking probably two to 300 strokes to finish a 50, whereas most kids and adults can do it in 25 or 30 strokes. He got more of a workout than anybody, and he probably puts in more pool time and gets in more shape, better shape than anybody. It was so impressive. The, the place was, you could hear a pin drop. We were just in awe of this guy, okay? That's what I'm talking about, all right? Kids, you understand that? Maybe not. <laughs> These words are right out of the parents' handbook. These words are right out of the... Uh, off the website. But I want you to know I'm, I'm, the, I'm the Harry Truman of, of, of swimming. And, I, and what I mean by that, the buck stops here. Okay? So as you know, Harry Truman, he was a famous rock and roll singer in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he wasn't. But this is a coach-run team. And if this philosophy doesn't get instilled, it's my fault. Okay? And again, I, I'm not perfect. I'm going to make mistakes. And when I do that, call me on it. Say, hey, I thought this was what, you know, you're trying to do this. But I want to make this team different than most other teams you've ever been involved in. Another story. Where my kids were, Ben and Elizabeth, as you know, I have many kids. Ben and Elizabeth swam for NYB for many, many years, Montgomery Y, before there was a PSL, before there was anything, before there was the lava had cooled. And they swam about seven to nine practices a week, let's say an average of eight practices a week. And they spent about two, two and a half hours with the head coach there, Chris Snyder. Chris saw my kids more than I did. 20 hours a week, my kids were with this man, okay? Not with you, with this man. He had the opportunity to instill certain values in my kids, okay? And he did, and he did a good job. Well, that's, that's what you're doing with me and Marty and, and the other folks, the other coaches in this team. You're entrusting us with your kids. Plus with the fact that we have YMCA, and look what we do at the YMCA, character development, okay? You bundle that together and we have a formula for doing the kind of things I'd like to do. Character first. We want our swimmers, we want them to become wonderful, productive citizens in our community, in our state, and in our nation. And don't you want them to be productive citizens and out of the house when they're 18? Well, maybe, maybe not. As a man who had a 26-year-old living in his house recently, it was, uh, sometimes that's hard to do. But we also want to instill this championship attitude. We want our swimmers to reach their peak potential with hard work, discipline, love for the sport. Hard work works. Have you ever heard me say that? I hope you have. If you haven't, that's my favorite thing to say. Hard work works. So that's what I'm going to try to instill in these kids. All right? That's my philosophy. Now, a little bit of the things I want you to take away from this. Maybe I'm going to dig a little deeper here. Philosophy. So based on this philosophy and the person I am, these are the things I want you to know. First of all, coaching is hard work. And if you've never been a head coach, you probably don't know the kind of trials you go through when kids don't do as well as you thought they were going to do. When you've invested your heart and soul and time. And it might make me cry when I tell you some of these stories of some of these kids that would come to me and cry after, a, after an event because they, they didn't reach the potential. They didn't reach the goals that we had set. And it breaks your heart. It really does. So I don't want you to think that this veneer, here I'm about to cry up here by myself, but this <laughs> veneer is like, oh, well, too bad. You should have tried harder, Laura. You know? but that, it hurts when it doesn't happen. It's hard, it's very hard to do. I do get a little meaner in the fall and the spring. Summer league's great. And, and it's a certain attitude we want to foster in summer league. But in the fall, for example, Lexi, how many practices a week could you attend in the summer? You had nine opportunities a week, okay? In the fall, I can only get four opportunities a week. So we have to be more serious, we have to be more regimented, we have to get, we have to get, we have to get the work done in the pool, okay? Uh, I'm not a miracle worker. I don't have a magic wand in my hand, okay? I cannot make things happen. I don't have s secret tips or... The I'll tell you another story. There I was, Auburn University, 1998. Uh, I was working... Uh, I was taking a class at Auburn called Mediated Instruction. So what I decided, I decided to do is to put together a, a training tape for swimmers. And so I went down to the pool and I talked to David Marsh. And some of you know David Marsh, 1996 Men's Olympic uh, uh, assistant coach, probably won NCAA championships and any coach ever uh, from, the de from 2000 to 2010. He won like 10 national championships with his men and his women. And so here I was, 1998, I'm at the feet of the master, you know? And so I said, I'm going to milk this guy for all he's worth because he's going to teach, I'm going to make videos with his swimmers, Rowdy Gaines, Anna Mika McReynolds, all these other Mimi Bowen, all these other great swimmers that Auburn had at the time. 
So I'm hanging out with Dave, and you know, I'd occasionally have to, I said, well, Dave, I've got a nine-year-old backstroker. She's about a 111, and I'm just wondering how to, you know, what kind of things I could do. He said, well, you just got to make her work hard. That's all he said. Where's the magic wand, buddy? I mean, tell me, what are you doing? Give me your secrets. And it took me years later, hanging out with guys like him, and I, 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 I got to know Eddie Reese at the University of Texas, and some certain things just always shine through with these coaches. No magic wand. Number one, high standards. High standards. These are my expectations. I expect you to meet them. Number two, the demand for hard work. And number three, they were tremendous teachers and motivators. Those, all these guys had those, three, those, common, those things in common. There's no magic swimming wand. It was a basic thing that your best boss has, or maybe you have, or people you've dealt with. That's, that's what, I'm not a miracle worker, but I'm gonna try to do what those guys did. I will not please all you all the time. I will guarantee you that some of you will not like some of the things I'm going to do. I'll guarantee it right now, okay? Um, too bad, <laughs> okay? <laughs> And finally, a great article by John Leonard, Why I Play Favorites. It's handed out in the readings. I've given you four readings there. That's your homework assignment for tonight. If you take time, you might want to read it because there's some words of wisdom in there. I mean, face it, when I play favorites, what does that mean? If I've got a kid who chronically comes in late, plays the goggle game while we're doing a workout, walks over to the blocks, what are we doing, coach? Gets in the lane, goofs around, splashes, complains about sets, how do I want to coach that person as opposed to a person that comes on time, ready to get in the water, says, hey, coach, what are we going to do today? I'm looking forward to it. I really want to meet my goals. You, only want, you want me to come to five practices? I'm going to come to six a week. Who am I going to give my attention to? Okay, what do you do? Right? It's just a fact of life. So read that article by John Leonard. Um, I'm not a mean guy, but the, the ones that want to swim are the ones we want to coach. Can I get an amen, Marty? Amen. <laughs> All right, let's move on to, I've, I've talked about my educational philosophy and some of the offshoots of that. Pictured here are state champions from the year previous. Two of these have gone on to the collegiate level. Maybe some of the other ones will, okay? Um, first thing I want to do with, in terms of nuts and bolts, and, and here I'm talking about the day-to-day -day grind. First thing, practice groups. I want simplicity, but I want challenge in that. And, and by simplicity, I, I want our kids to be able to readily identify which group is what and what they do. So this is what I want to do, and I think most, most of you are familiar with this. I know you can't see very well back there, but it's so simple, I can just say it and you'll understand it. I want a bronze group, I want a silver group, I want a gold group. That's it, okay? But one of these days, I hope to have a nationals group. One of these days, okay? Let's talk about the gold group. Well, frankly, I don't have any gold swimmers yet because I have created the gold standard, okay? The gold standard is this. You must be in the gold group. You have to have B time standards in two events, attend at least six practices a week. One is a Saturday morning, one is another morning. And you must work personal goals and nutrition uh, guidance with me, okay? That's the gold standard. If you wanna be in the gold team and wear a gold cap and practice in the gold lane and get special attention, well, not much special attention, but, you want to have that, that honor of being a gold swimmer. That's what you got to do for me. So there's the challenge. Simple, three groups, a challenge. That's all I want. And I want those groups in the water virtually the same time every day. More on that in a moment. The national standard is going to be even higher. Okay? But we're not there yet. We're not even quite there yet. I don't know if I'm going to have any swimmers who are going to commit to this standard or not. I don't know. The proof's going to be in the pudding. I'm taking attendance every day. I'm going to have talk, talks with the gold group, and we're going to find out who wants to do it and who doesn't. If you don't want to do it, but you're swimming with the gold group, you're a gold-eligible swimmer. Okay? All right. A little confusing, but hopefully not too confusing. <coughs> confusing. All right. Let's talk about practice schedule. I want simplicity. I want consistency, meaning same time, daily. All right? I want to maximize pool time, which is extremely difficult in this, in our situation. I do want ample practices though, and finally I want us to think ahead. So, bronze practice, four practices a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 3.45, 4.40 every day. Three. Saturday morning practice. Silver group, seven practices a week, or being off. Afternoons are always 5.37, no matter what, except Wednesday. No matter what, simplicity, okay, I want simplicity, I want consistency. 5.30, most, most of the time, 5.30 to 6 is going to be character development or dry land. 
and six to seven is gonna be uh, swimming in the pool, right? Morning practice is reserved Tuesday and Thursday for 12 and older only, but that's Tuesday, Thursday, 545, and on Saturday morning we're offering a silver practice too. Again, that's gonna be Marty with Russ helping. Finally, gold practice. Every day, every weekday, 345 to six, except for Wednesday, if I'm gonna practice what I preach, if I'm gonna be the man that I say I am, I want them to be able to get out in time if they wanna to go to church. Okay, so I'm going to make the schedule commensurate with that. So they're getting out at 540. If your church starts at 530, you need to talk to the pastor. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Tell them, Pastor, we got a conflict here. Swim in church, swim in church. Okay. All right. I'm offering eight a week, eight practices a week, and this is the best I can do. Nationals to be determined. All right. I hope I have created simplicity, consistency, maximum full time, and, and, and I've, I've, I've fostered this idea of thinking ahead. And if we bubble that thing in, we can also create a pre-team, a, a developmental group. So, so your siblings, because we've got to build the base, you know? Where do good swimmers come from right now? They come from Summer League, <laughs> okay? Because the Summer League is where we build the base, and then we put them into the year-round program. All right. Finally, meet schedule. Target meets, mostly for the silver and the gold group. Two target meets a year and we build to that target meet. I've got a micro plan, I've got an intermediate plan, I've got a mic macro plan. The macro plan builds towards these target meets. I'll show you where those are in a minute. I want to stay close because I don't want us to spend a lot of money on travel, on uh, swimming meets. I need to do a certain number of YMCA meets. If you're a YMCA team, you've got to attend a certain number of YMCA meets to go to YMCA nationals. So I'd like to offer at least a meet a month, probably more than that. Now you're not gonna be able to see this and that's good because it's tentative. <laughs> But it looks like our first meet might be September 7th at Greystone Y. That's a mandatory meet for the gold team because that's a Y closed meet. This will be published within a week, maybe two, but you're gonna have to opt in early because that's September 7th meet. I need to know who can make that meet. But I, what I really wanna draw your attention to is target meet, target meet. We build to that. If you're a gold swimmer and your target meet is the Alabama High School Athletic Association Championships, guess what? When you go to uh, the Fall Classic at MYB, you may not have a best time because you're going to be tired. You're going to be wore out. In fact, your warm-ups, you're not going to do a 1,500-yard warm-up. You're going to do a 5,000-yard warm-up, Kristen. Well, maybe not that much. Okay. But here's the target meets beginning of December, 6th and 7th and 8th because with high school championships, they always stay over an extra day at Auburn. For, they, they allow an extra day because these kids are tapered. For high school meets, you can only swim three events. So the kids who've been training, 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 they go to the high school meet, they swim three events, they say, man, I'm tapered for this meet, I've shaved for this meet. So they, they have an extra meet and that'll be at Auburn. So that's gonna be a target meet for a lot of our gold swimmers. For the gold swimmers who don't do high school and the silver swimmers who are, are, are at that level where they need to, t to, to have a target meet, the following week we're at the crossplex. I have seen some tremendous times out of that crossplex pool. It's a pretty fast pool. Okay. Then we start the cycle over again. That's cycle one, that's cycle two. Uh, all the way up to S Southeastern Championships, but I don't want you to think we're only going to train kids for Southeasterns. If you don't have a Southeastern cut, we're obviously gonna train you for districts. We'll taper you, taper you in, in, in build towards the districts meet. Now, if some of this sounds foreign in Greek to you, you'll understand it as, as it rolls in, but basically we build to the big meets, okay? All right, now, I know there's some typos in there. <laughs> I'm not sure. Nuts and bolts, some things I want you to know. Guys, I don't know if this is going to work or not. I've never been in a four-lane pool, okay? I've never been the head coach of this team, okay? I, I, I don't know how well my plan is going to work. So it may morph. It may change as time moves on. But I want to tell you some things. I do expect swimmers to compete. I don't want lap swimmers. I don't want fitness swimmers. If you want to say, I don't want to compete, please do lap swimming and let me move these people on, on, the, on the waiting list into the competition team so they can compete. Does it make sense to you? Okay, because I only have, I can only accommodate 80, 81 swimmers at a time, and we already have like 10 or 15 on the waiting list. Okay, so if you don't want to compete, you don't want to work hard, go to lap swim, and let's move these people in. Observing practice, nobody's on deck except Friday. Friday's the only day I want you to come and observe practice, okay? Rest of the day, go get some pizza, go home, make supper, but don't come on deck, okay? Let, it, let the coaches coach, and you guys just trust what we're doing out there. Um, late to practice. I don't know what it was. It must have been in the water this summer, but there's this, um, there's this uh, habitual lateness these days. I don't get it. 
Now, some of you may say, what's the big deal, late to practice? But practices are carefully orchestrated, or at least they should be, or regimented to the point to where when you, we build to a certain thing in the practice, there's a certain purpose each practice, especially with the gold group. So you roll in 10, 15 minutes late, you miss the, the, the preliminary work to the practice, okay? Now, I can understand coming late once every, you know, I know things happen, but chronically late, you know, there's got to be something, that's, there's got to be some sort of penalty for chronic lateness. For bronze group, if you're chronically late, we're going to scold you until your eyes bleed. <laughs> okay? For silver group, if you're chronically late, you're not going to swim that day. And for gold group, if you're chronically late, yeah, I'll just move you to silver. Okay? It just, it messes up my schedule. They come walking in, and what are my four words I hate the most, swimmers? What are we doing? Because what are we doing means you're either late or you weren't listening. Okay, See, and, I, and I just, I, I'm running in practice, you're coming in late, now I've got to show, oh, Susie, you go to this lane now because Billy's here now and Billy's faster, it just screws everything up. So parents, please respect that. Um, team gear at swimming meets. I'm not going to require you have an exact PSL team suit, but I want team colors, green and black, okay? Um, we'll maybe build to this idea of a team suit later. But right now, I, I, want, I, want, I want team colors and I want a team cap. I want our team to look like a team. Right? Bill Sweetman, great five-time Olympic coach, coached for three different teams, says one of the things you want to instill in swimming teams is a professional look. Okay? So we want to look good out on deck. We want to look like a team. And you want to build a camaraderie and esprit de corps that other teams are going to look at and say, wow, do you see, do you see those guys? Right? Um, I will add this, parents, girls especially, pay attention to practice suits. Because I've seen some practice suits that are mighty risky out there. Not that they're not cut right, it's just that they're old. And they shed, and the light enters. <laughs> okay? Parents, I'm not kidding. I've seen some, I've, I take, take, hey Billy, let me tell you something. Let me, do you know what everybody's looking at right now when you're standing behind the block? No, oh, coach, what? And I tell them what they're looking at, okay? <laughs> uh, Parents, pay attention to that. If, if your kid says, I need a new practice suit because it's see-through, it probably is. And it's distracting because all the boys are going to say, look at it. And the girls are going to say, yeah. So please pay attention to that. All right. For gold-only swimmers. You know what, gold? You may never have a best time until a target meet. And if you don't have a best time at a target meet and you've attended practices, it's my fault. Okay? But don't expect to have a, a personal best every, every meet. Drag suits and shave. The best swimmers don't shave. And they get, the girls get hairy legs, get hairy arms, and right before a big meet, they shave everything. Then they get underneath those silky covers at night and say it's the best night's sleep they've ever had. I've never had that experience, I hate to tell you, but I've never done that. Um, then they get in the pool and they, have, they drop two, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, because they're tapered and they are shaved. All right, I'm sure there's gonna be some girls who are gonna wanna shave. If you do, I'm gonna make you wear a wife beater. Does anybody know what a wife beater is? It's a t-shirt, okay? So I want some drag on while you're practicing, okay? That just gives me a little bit more of an edge. So don't shave, don't, um, uh, what am I saying? Oh, and wear drag suits of practice. Uh, finally, equipment. We are gonna be using the equipment. So if, if you're a gold swimmer and if you don't have this equipment, come see me before you buy because I don't want a 13-year-old to buy a paddle that big for his arm. And I don't want a, Ken Levin's buying a paddle that big, okay? Depending on your arms, your legs, and your, your strength, and your age, you buy certain types of equipment. All right, last, this is it. I'm about to unveil the secrets to making a great swimmer. Don't tell anybody, this is my secret, okay? Five things that you need. Okay, I'm being facetious because what, I'm, what I should say is, what does it take to make a person good at something? Okay, what, what does it take? Number one, support. A loving, nurturing home environment. I'm going to tell you there's a famous saying, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. And I can look at a kid, and I can tell a lot about you by looking at that kid. Within a day, I'll know more about you because they'll volunteer information, number one. <laughs> and number two, you just tell by the way they are. You just tell what kind of, you, it, no, I mean, certainly there's exceptions because my wife and I aren't very good parents, but our kids are great. <laughs> well, anyways. <clears throat> Parents should be a swimmer's number one fan. Parents are not coaches and should not coach. Now, I understand some of you might have some swimming experience, and I know you're really, really interested in swimming. And when I first started this, you should have seen the spreadsheets I was keeping on my kids. Oh my gosh, I knew their time, I knew how much time they dropped, you know, and I was giving them pointers. So, well, you know what they say, you know. 
And finally, I got a lesson from the head coach. He says, listen, you need, to, you need to get off the deck. You need to leave your kids alone. You need to let me coach. You need to just love your kids, okay? What they want to do is they want to come home and hear, how was the day today, Susie? Boy, you're looking good. Here's a good meal for you. Oh, we love you. They don't want to hear what, what, what they stress in practice like. Okay. Did you make your inner move? No, don't, let's not, leave it alone. And let me tell you what else. I've seen this, how many years have I done this? 18 years. And I want to tell you, this, is, this, this happens to all, the, to all the swimmers I've ever seen whose coaches coach them from the ages of six on up. By the time they're 12, they're ready to quit. Okay? By the time they're eight or nine, they don't identify your love as just loving them unconditionally. They identify your love as, I got to swim well. Okay? If you're out there saying, buddy, we're going to the pool, we've got to work on your starts. You know, they begin to think that their swimming is more important to you than just them. All right? I've seen it a thousand times. I'll probably see it a thousand and one. Give, give the kids time. Loving, nurturing home is number one. Number two is guidance. You need people who know what they're doing, helping them to unfold the way they should go. Okay? In other words, you need good coaches. I hope we've supplied that. Um, Bill Swedenham, again, five-time Olympic uh, uh, head coach for three different countries. He must be good if these different countries keep hiring him. He says, you know, when you want your swimmers to, to perform at a higher level, the coaching staff needs to have a higher level. In other words, you need to have been there. So if I've got Ken Levins walks out on deck and he's been to the Southeastern Championships and he's, played, he's, placed, he's swam in finals before, but I've never been to Southeasterns and I'm the head coach, what can I offer him that he doesn't already know? Right? So the, the coaching staff has to have a level of experience and maturity that, that exceeds that of the swimmer. That makes sense, doesn't it? So I think we offer that because we've been around a long time. I've been to some of these big meets. I stood right next to Ryan Lochte. He's not that tall, really. I don't know how he's so fast. I mean, that guy's so fast. Um, okay, so anyways, that's the number two thing you need. Is, is this secret unfolding? Is this all secret information? Number three, what do you need? You need a f facility. We need help here. 85 degree temperatures in four lanes that are narrow is hard. It's very hard. If I have a 35, 4,000 yard set ready for my goal group and the water temperature is 85, we may not get through it. Okay? We need help here. So what do we say to David Lewis? How's the bubble coming? Okay? Um, but we're going to say we do have water, we have 25 yards, and we have flags that are regulation. Okay? So we've got a suitable facility. These next two are so, so important. Hard work ethic. Hard work works. I don't, that's, it's hard to coach that. It's hard to coach that. But if a kid comes out there and wants to work hard, wants to improve, that really certainly helps him to become a better swimmer. And by the way, that's a life lesson. Hard work working to get to, your, to, get to the goals you want. Finally, talent. Some have it, some don't. It's just a bottom line thing. I mean, it's too bad Jason isn't here, because I was going to ask Jason to tell you how, good, how well I play basketball. Okay? And I would ask Jason, I'd say, Jason, am I a good basketball player or not? And he's going to say, yeah, yeah, you're pretty good. Well, he's lying. I'm terrible. Okay? But I've probably put in as much court time as, as Kobe. Since I, was, <laughs> since I was four years old, I played basketball all the time. But I just, I can't do it. I, I, the only reason they ever pick me up is because I'm six foot five. You know? <laughs> and I just, some people have the talent, some people don't. And I, I, I can't replace that. I'll, I'll tell you another story. Many of you remember Woody, Woody Joy. I've told some of you this story. And I was 12 years old. Uh, I was 12 years old. Woody was 12, and we were in Tuscaloosa at a swimming meet, and we were doing our warm-ups. And Woody, and Woody by the time, seventh last year at Olympic trials in the 200 IM, uh, U.S. Uh, uh, Nationals, second place, uh, 200 fly, 100 fly. So he's a pretty good swimmer. Swims for Arizona right now. Uh, Woody hops out of the water during the warm-up, and he walks over to the starting block, and the starting block has this like 120 grit sandpaper on it. It's, it's glued on there. Woody walks over there and rubs his hands on the block, gets back in the water and swims. I looked over at the head coach. I said, why, why did he do that? He says, oh, all the good swimmers do that. Well, I swam from 6 till 18, and I never did that. <laughs> why did Woody do that? He roughed up his hands so he got a better feel for the water. He did it naturally. Nobody ever told him to do that. How did he know? It was a talent. It's just something that he had. He had a feel for the water. You can see that in swimmers. 1998, I had a little blonde-headed girl. Looked a lot like, uh, what's that girl's tall, blonde-headed girl's name? Isabella, was that her name? Mm -hmm. Isabella. Yeah. And she was out practicing, and I was watching her for this first 
first three weeks of practice. And I, I have never seen a girl swim like this, this eight-year-old girl, strong, tough, swam up and down the pool, just running circles around these everybody. Unfortunately, her dad was in the military. They had to, to leave after about three or four weeks of summer league swimming. Twelve years later, she's at the Olympics, bronze medalist, Chloe Sutton. You know, I, I just remember, I, it took me one minute to look at her and say, she's the one, you know, okay? Uh, and so you can see that some kids just have that talent level. Some, some, some have some of it, and some don't have it, all right? So those are the five key ingredients, support, guidance, environment, work ethic, and talent. I can control two of them, and I can help to coach a third. Can you guess which two I have no control over? Talent and you and what's going on at home, okay? Okay, that's the secret. Don't tell anybody, all right? Just one, raise your right hand and say, I promise not to tell anybody. All right, some things swimmers should know about being a good swimmer. First of all, hard work is a value by itself. I gave you this reading, Chop Wood, Hall of Water. You might want to use that with your kids. Again, this is an article written by John Leonard, and the, and the bottom line here is that in rural China, or most rural anywhere, in order to live, you have to have heat and water, right? Because in the winter, you don't want to die of the cold thing, okay? And you also have to have water in order to survive and to wash and that kind of stuff. So what do you spend most of your day doing? Chop wood, haul water. That's what you do. Occasionally, life is intermixed with marriages, uh, a present from a friend, maybe a sad event in your life, but most of life is chop wood, haul water, kids. That's what, so you have to learn to like the mundane details of the day, chopping wood and hauling water, okay? So we need to teach hard work, and this is a character development skill that we coaches need to instill in the kids. Hard work works. Number two, life is not a, unfortunately, we have done such a great disservice to our, society, to our kids these days. Every day they think they, sh they should have a life like Kim Kardashian or whoever that crazy woman is, right? <laughs> Life's not like that, swimmers. <laughs> if you ask mom and dad when they're getting up at 6.30 to go to work after they drop you off at school, then they go to work, they get yelled at by their boss, they miss lunch because, of, you know, that's what, you're chopping wood and hauling water in a modern day sense. That's what, you, that's what we do. Swimmers must learn what effort actually is. But also with hard work, swimmers, you've got to learn to do it correctly. If you don't have time to do it correctly the first time, when do you have time to ever do it over and learn it the right way? You've got to get the technique down first, then work on racing. And telling a 12 and under boy this, you might as well be talking to your dog, okay? <laughs> because they want to race. I don't care what the technique is, I want to beat this moron in front of me. Okay? That's what the, so somehow we have to instill in them this mindset of let's do it right the first time. Okay? So these are the kind of things that good swimming is all about. Don't worry, Kristen. We're near the end. I know you're getting tired over there. <laughs> Other stuff. Let's get down to just a couple more things. Meet schedule. I hope to come out within a week or two. You need to opt in quickly when that, when that comes up. Uh, I, I've been chastised for studying practice too early, but I don't like swimmers out of water more than two weeks. And when it comes Christmas time, I hope they're not out more than one week. Uh, 12th to the 16th, we're going to beat the city pool. Gold at 3 o'clock, uh, and uh, silver and bronze at 4.15. This is going to be some fairly simple test type stuff, okay? I'm going to do some testing on the kids to see where they are. On the 19th of August, until it gets cold, we're going to be right out here in the afternoons. Beginning September 3rd, mornings start. Communication. If, if I need to communicate with you quickly, it will be through email. I don't do text, ask my wife. Okay? I don't know how to do text. I'm purposely ignorant on texting. Okay? I'm a dinosaur. Email I'm good at, and Carrie also does send out a lot of blanket emails. Facebook, I don't even know how Facebook works. The first time I was on Facebook was the other day when somebody said David's video was on Facebook. So that's when I first, I, I had my son John log on Facebook and I went to his Facebook. But I understand somebody puts stuff on Facebook. Somebody does, okay. Website, I've tried to make our website very simple, very easy to follow, we're still building it. Has anybody been able to go there and look at it? It's nothing fancy. But hopefully it has the kind of information you need. If you think it needs more information, some stuff you want that, that, that I might need to put on there, I will do that. But I do not want, I don't like seeing every third word as a hot word because I think, well, should I click on it or not? Because the next thing you know, I've clicked on six different things and I'm way far away from where I wanted to be, okay? And finally, we're gonna have some folders set up for, for our basic uh, communications or in handing out ribbons and stuff like that, okay? All right, final thoughts. I wanna make a prediction. Some of this will change. I, I don't know, maybe, maybe I don't have a good plan. Maybe something's wrong. Maybe I've, I've made some mistakes here. And I, I'm 
you know, I've got really thick skin at the age of 53, having raised 10 kids. I've seen a lot of stuff. So I'm not worried about making changes, but I'm, we're gonna try to stick with the plan. What did Pat and say, gentlemen? An 80% plan today is better than a 100% plan tomorrow. Well, I've got the 80% plan today, I hope. Finally, that's a nice talk, Joe, but we'll see what happens in six months, okay? So we, we will see. So let's go, you guys ready to go? We will have some fun, just like these kids did at the state meet. That's actual Sharpie and they were comic book characters. And I don't know whose idea this was, but I have a feeling that these 11, 12 boys had something to do with it. It's probably, probably John, Eric, and Dawson right here. So this is before, and this is in their action poses. So here's Brent being the Hulk. This is Iron Man, I guess. And I don't know what Ken's doing there, but yeah, we do have time. Yeah, but what's he doing? Like, he looks like he's serving a platter. You know? What I'd like to do now, is let Carrie say a few things. Do you have a few things you want to say, or do you have? I just wanted to just go over. A Stand up a second. I just wanted to say that um, if you have any questions about any money that comes out, y'all are free to call me, message me. However, I work in the afternoon, so y'all once y'all move over back to the DMS branch, you'll see me. I'm there every afternoon. So, um, as far as money, nothing will come out of your accounts until September first. So I'm not. The registration fees that you guys pay, that's it till then. Um, I will, the program fees, that 69, the 102, that comes out on the first of each month. And then your competition fees will come out on the 15th. And that's just based on how many swimmers, if you have more than one swimmer, the fee does go up. And then any meets that your uh, swimmer does compete in, that is drafted the Friday after the meet takes place. So um, if you see a lot of stuff coming out at one time, I know that this, um, the first meet and the first competition fee are going to hit about the same time. So if you see a lot of charges come out, y'all can call me and say, hey, Carrie, I have this coming out. What is that? You know, I'm off, you know, I'll tell you. Because so. you may have any questions about fees or drafting or anything like that. <laughs> can you just say that again? What's the first? The first is going to be the program fee. So um, depending on if you're a bronze, silver, swimmer, silver is like 86 a month. And then 15th is going to be that competition fee. It's just like that's the same as been for the past couple of years. The $30 or 50 or however, um, you know, how many swimmers it goes up from there. So any more questions? Please don't have the sticker shock that I had my first year of swimming when <laughs> I signed for a draft and I didn't. I opted kids in, I maybe I didn't, and then suddenly I got charged for a meet I didn't go to. I thought it was highway robbery, I felt like I was violated, you know. <laughs> but I have signed on the bottom line. If I opted in for a meet, I paid for it whether I showed up or not. Okay, so be aware of that because it, it hurts when you're charged yeah. 40, 60, 80 bucks and you didn't expect it. We should have, when the meet schedule comes out, we should have. We should have those opt-in forms at the same time. The opt-in forms will accompany the meet schedule. Give up at practice and get those to carry by a certain day. Yeah. Well, I'll have a date that y'all, I don't need this back. Will the opt-in form say how much the cost is for each meet? No, it won't. If we go, it's based by what an, an entry fee per swimmer, and that's whatever the venue charges us to put your swimmer in a meet. And then the rest of the fee is based on how many events your child swims, and if they go one day or two days. And we don't ever know that until actually we get the entries in. So that's going to vary depending on the venue and and where we go. Usually, all is a little bit more expensive. Me, um, the you at the ones that are at Wise are usually a little bit less. If that's so, something you really have to know, you can go to the other team's website and they'll have an invitation there, and you can sometimes look that up, and it can it'll tell you what those fees are for each of the end. Yeah. And usually. Facility B and whatever. Yeah. So, are there any more questions? All right. If you're. Um, Joe, let me say one thing about swimming. Really okay, cool. from the parent association president. <laughs> um, like Joe said, starting next year, we are going to have a team suit, and this year we're just right. Yeah, just team colors. And so we wanted to kind of migrate into that so that you're not obligated this year to buy a $60 team suit. So if your child needs a suit, uh, you may want to go ahead and buy the team suit, you know, because it is going to be mandatory next year, okay? And of course, what's recommended is to buy the team suit because it's always more expensive. Save that for me. Yes? What is a team suit? 
Well, we're, we're looking right now. We've got three that we're looking at right now, but, but what you want to find is a suit that's going to be available for the next six to seven years. And a lot of suits, if we catch it in the middle, it's only going to be available for the next two years. And we don't want to make that investment. So I'm working right now with Don to try to find us a suit. But usually, Marty and I were talking about it today, usually a team suit is going to be more of a solid with maybe a striping across it. It's not going to be these modeled you know, colors and that kind of thing because those suits are usually only out for two years. Okay, so if you look at the suit and you're like, geez, Leah sure picked a plain Jane suit, you know, this year. That's kind of what's, what's offered whenever you do something like that because it's got to be long term. Okay, so just September 5th or 6th. Jeff, you want to talk quickly about any fast skin rules um, the parent was asking or just wait till? Well, I can't do it. I can't do it. Please come to the desk. Are you talking about legal? Please come to the desk. Yeah, they just wear black fast skins if we have black fast skins. If you have a black, if it, as long as it's black, green, or black and green. Okay. Okay. But if it's solid black, we're still good. Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Okay, I, I, I've, ta I've talked a lot. You guys are probably hungry. Uh, what we'll ask is anybody who's new who has questions, or anybody who's bronze and has questions, we'll meet with Marty up here. Uh, I'll, I'll be standing by the door if you have any questions for me. Uh, thank you for your attendance. Uh, looking forward to a good season, and feedback's important. Let me know how it's going. Thank you.